I'm talking about the multiverse, which is this concept, especially in the uh, the theory of inflation of the very early universe, that there are little pocket universes dotting the the great you know landscape or fabric of the cosmos, where the actual universe is much, 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 much larger. The actual universe continues to expand with inflation out into infinity, but little pieces of that giant universe branch off, pinch off, and become little bubble universes of their own. And those little bubble universes have their own little pockets, their own little lives. They cannot touch, they cannot smell, they cannot communicate with any of the other little pockets out there. Now, if this idea is right, then there is always new universes being generated all the time because the multiverse continues to exist, continues to expand, and little baby universes keep pinching off. Now, if that's true, and we don't know if it's true or not, but if it's true, and if there are a finite number of ways to arrange matter in a universe, like this atom is going to go here with that velocity, this ad- this electron is going to go here with that velocity, this photon is going to be over here with that velocity. Like if you imagine all the possible ways you can arrange matter, then if there are an infinite number of universes or a sufficiently large number of universes, then there will be repeats. There'll be a repeat of this exact scenario. This arrangement of atoms doing this arrangement of things will be repeated. Yes, there are a lot of different combinations of matter out there. Trust me. I tried to count once and it didn't go well. But if you have enough universes, you're going to get repeats. Which means this exact scenario right here of me recording this episode or you watching this episode is being repeated somewhere else out there. And if there are an infinite number of universes, that means this scenario is being repeated an infinite number of times. Right now, simultaneous, boom, right now. And it's a finite distance away. It's like over there, past the edge of our observable universe, and keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, and eventually you'll get there to the repeat. You'll never be able to actually reach it because it's being spread faster than the speed of light between uh, the bubble universes, so you can't ever go there, but it's there. (sighs) Sounds crazy, but nature's been crazy before. Is it right? Is it correct? Well, we don't know. We don't understand the idea of inflation, let alone multiverse. We've tried some direct experiments for multiverse. Didn't work out. You know, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It could just be, you know, we don't have evidence for it. So what are we left with? Like, how are we supposed to decide if we live in a multiverse or not? Well, here's an interesting idea, another aspect of this multiverse idea. Every time one of these little bubble universes pinches off to make their own little pocket universe, it ends up with its own set of physics. The way inflation ends in a particular universe dictates certain fundamental physics. Sets, you know, the mass of the electron. The mass of the top quark might set the number of forces, the amount of dark energy. These are very important numbers. And when we look at our universe, this one, the one we inhabit, we say, why do we have this electron mass? Why do we have this Planck constant? Why do we have this much dark energy? Why do we have four forces of nature instead of two or 17? And you start to wonder, like, man, if I change the electron mass, if I change the strength of the electromagnetic interaction, you know, life would cease to exist, wouldn't it? Like, we just, you know, we dissolve because all the stuff our chemistry and biology rely on would just be different. There'd be different rules and we'd, you know, we're done. So does, why do we live in this universe? 
Is it because in the multiverse, there's all sorts of different universes, each with its own set of physics, and of course we're going to find ourselves in a universe that has physics compatible with life because it'd be impossible for us to arise in a universe that was incompatible with life. Now, that's a pretty compelling argument. It's called the weak anthropic principle. But it's not exactly a scientific argument, is it? Right? Because just saying, well, we live in this universe because it's impossible to live in any other universe. Okay, you can make that statement. You know, that's a decent philosophical position. You can't use that to say, therefore, we live in a multiverse. You can't make that step. Because at the end of the day, there's no evidence. Like, of course we live in this universe. Is that evidence? It's a line of argument for sure. But is it evidence? Which is a whole other ballgame. Physicists debate this all the time when we bother thinking about it. And I'll leave it to you to debate next. Does the multiverse exist? And does our existence demonstrate the fact that the multiverse exists? Thank you so much for watching. If you think the multiverse exists, please click like. If you think the multiverse does not exist, please also click like and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep this show going. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.